This episode of TRS is brought to you by Mog, the best web and mobile music service, period. Today on the show, we explore the depths of space in the board game Alien Frontiers. It's time once again to dip into the world of board games. We've got a brand new board game this week. It's called Alien Frontiers. It's from Clever Mojo Games. The story behind this game is really cool. The designer, Tori Neiman, I believe it is, Nyman Neiman, uh, took, had this idea, I think back in 2009, and had designed a board game before, but took this idea to Kickstarter oh, to yeah. raise money. He wanted to raise $5,000 to make, make the game. Make a prototype or whatever. They ended up raising almost $15,000. Wow. The first uh, print run of the game completely sold out. It was a huge hit. It's been wow. named Game of the Year by a bunch of websites. Wow. You couldn't get it for the longest time because it was so high in demand, and it's just got another print run. Uh, and we finally got a chance to play it. This is a area control game, which means you're you're, it's, a, it's a space idea, Alien Frontiers, of course, mm. sci-fi. Uh, and it's based on classic sci-fi. There's lots of references to old sci-fi authors, Asimov, Heinlein, etc. Yep. Uh, and you're trying to dis deploy your colonies onto a planet and control as many areas of that planet as you can to score points. How you do that is rolling dice. The dice are your ships. You roll all of the dice as your ships, and then based on the numbers that you get, you're able to dock those ships at various ports in space that allow you to do certain things. Mm. So it's a very simple mechanic, just roll dice and then figure out what you can do based on Yeah, your, where can your you dock your ships based on where other people's ships are docked and all that stuff. But therein lies a lot of <clears throat> strategy. It gives you to steal four resources from any combination of players. Okay. Five, six, three is my dice roll. Maybe I will be asshole. <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go lunar mine. Three, five. I'm gonna take my two, right? Mm -hmm. Take that, put it in my terraforming station. Boom. Take my one in the thing. That goes back there, that goes here. Deploy. And I think what I want a day. Let me see here. Yeah. What can I do? Oh, I, I have doubles. Yeah. So. And you have enough. You could get a ship. Your fourth ship. Oh yeah. You could get a ship. Yep. You shouldn't. I could. Or you could actually. Wait, what you could you? convert those two suns into two ores, and then put your other one in the sun converter and get two suns. Because you can, if it's two, if it's two ones, that's the low. I mean, that's so the best one. conversion you're ever gonna get for suns to ores. Yeah, it's an orbital market, right? So that's about that's. But what if you wanted to do this first, you could get an additional ore because you would get an additional sun and transfer that. So if you want to do that first, mm. I was thinking second, so that you have one sun still to do whatever, whatever sun. Dock the dude in the sun, get it, get one more of those, then do that, and you have three to convert rather than two. Let's see what the new one is. Stasis beam. Whoa. They have sun to subtract one point from one of your unplaced ships. Daniel, tell me what you thought of Alien Frontiers. I thought this game was really cool. I, I, I really felt like I was Picard or mm. Shatner. What? Is, is it, <laughs> what am I? Why? Kirk. Kirk. Um, wow. You know, I really, I really like, like felt Odama. like Odama. I, I felt like I Odama. Odama. Adama. Adama. Yeah, Odama. Odama, is, Odama uh, sounds a little. Is it, uh, yeah. Not a song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And I was gonna say. Odama. All right. All right. Here we go. Anyway, back on I the apologize. Train. <laughs> I get did the rails this. Sci-fi <laughs> fail. Yeah. Anyway, um, I felt like I had to make those cool decisions that you have to make if you're leading a Starfleet, and um, I also made me feel a lot like I was playing Civilization. In mm. terms of in Civilization, you kind of have to choose: Am I going to go for a diplomatic? Victory? Am I going to go for a or a battle, a war, a con military military victory? And it's the same kind of thing. I, I got we were playing, and me and another player, or Mike, um, AKA, AKA Mike. Uh, where, like, <laughs> you guys don't know. Like you yeah. can you, once, you can claim a, you, can, you can claim a territory, um, 
and but if someone else puts their, their their flag down that territory, then none of you have it. You can and like you can either like okay, I'll just go for the other ones, or no, I'm gonna stick it out and win, try and win big on this one. And then you were like faced with those moral dilemmas, like mm -hmm. do I you know save one person or save them all? You know what I mean? Right. Like it's, it's that cool kind of decision making that the game elicits. That was a lot of fun. It's interesting that you say civilization. And, you know, there's a game called Roll Through the Ages that basically is a civilization game with dice, uh, and I certainly think the dice. Is the cool mechanic oh, with that's this game? True. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, you yeah. love rolling dice. Love me some rolling dice. What do you think uh, of this one? Oh, this is it was actually surprisingly fun, and I think it's because I'm not usually a big sort of resource management slash, you know, hold your stuff, you know, like risk type of games where yeah. you're kind of holding like this is mine. Oh, somebody's on there now. Darn it. You know what I mean? I don't usually like those types of games. Um, I love me some dice rolling games. So uh, <laughs> the, I, I thought it was really interesting when when you were first explaining it to us and saying like, well, okay, well your dice are your ships. I was like, I mean it's just dice. <laughs> you really get to this feeling of these are my ships and I am moving them around the galaxy. Yeah. And and in doing so, in commanding these little ships. You know, it would have been cool had the dice sort of been I feel, I feel like had a little like, bit of ship. I feel like it. you're a little kid and Jeff was like you're like, you're gonna go into the world of of, of uh, Lord, Middle Earth on the screen. You're like, that's just images flashing on a screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not, oh, that's a Frodo Baggins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but it was, it was that kind of thing where you sort of let that go and then it becomes like, where should I put my ships? And, and it has a really cool, it has a lot of really clever mechanics. Um, I agree. So it's a very fun game. You know, the, the fact that you can dock in certain stations only with, you know, like sequential dice, like a two, three, four can go into this specific thing and do cool things. Or like, if you get two of a kind, you can put them into this thing. And then the other thing is the augmentation of like when you control a, a piece of land, you get an ability. Right. And some of those are very powerful abilities. You know what I mean? Um, so that becomes desirable. Like that's like yeah, Dan like, was fighting Yeah, I want to control it because spot. that is a really cool ability. And then yeah. there's also these sort of alien artifact cards, which like my plasma cannon. That was game changer for me. It was. That was game changer. Um, so it was a super fun game. I was, I'd love to play it again. Yeah, I love it too. It's one of my favorite games that I've I've played in the last year or so. It is so wonderfully simple that you can teach it very quickly. No. Uh, the, really, the only complicated thing is knowing what each of the stations do. But even that, you pick up on pretty quickly. Um, but it, the thing I love about board games is making wonderful decisions. And yes, there's a lot of luck involved, obviously, if you're rolling a bunch of dice on your turn. You're rolling up to six dice, seven dice sometimes, on yeah. your turn. So there is a lot of quote unquote luck, but you have tons of choices. When you get that boat of numbers, you can then just start deciding, where do I want to allocate these yeah, things? And what and you, order? And, and yeah. there's never really only one thing you can do. There's yeah. always multiple options with those numbers. So while there is some luck, you do have strategic decisions to be made. Now, my only gripe with the game is, you know, there's something in the board game community called AP, analysis paralysis. Basically, it's waiting for somebody to make a decision. And when right. you have tons of dice out there in front of you, there can be that moment of like, too many choices. Oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, and that can make the game grind to a halt a little bit. And you can't do that until you roll the dice, so it's not even like you can pre-plan. Exactly. Well, you can right. sort of have an idea of what you're heading for, but yeah, then it's dictated yeah. by what you've got. So yeah. you can run into a little analysis paralysis in the game, and if you're playing with a really slow player, it can be a little annoying. But the game is so much fun, it's so easy to learn, it, it's got great art. You think I'm yeah. thinking about something specific? I don't know. No, that's, I saw Although Dan I am, go, I'm thinking my of... Dan went chink. Which one of us is he talking about? <laughs> oh, no, the no, no, abstract, no, no. it was just in the yeah. abstract. Mm -hmm. um, the great art on the, on the board, yeah. and it's fun if you're, like me, a fan of these classic science fiction authors, that those references are in, and, and they are appropriate to their author. You know, it's the Asimov Crater, and mm. the Burroughs Desert, and all these things. It's, it's a cool send up of all those, uh, not send up, but you know. Uh, homage. Homage. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, someone should definitely make a game called Analysis Paralysis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just well, saying. yeah. Maybe we should start a Kickstarter. <laughs> You're doing it. This is a great game. If you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. It's one of those wonderful introductions to designer board games. Games, I think it's uh, very easy to learn, but difficult to master, and I think it's a lot of fun. You know, it only supports four players. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to say real quick was that there... There is a little bit of screw your neighbor, yeah. but to me, it's like the perfect amount because it's not a, a, it's not like Munchkin where the whole game is 
how you can screw with the you can't, other you players. Can't, also you can't screw someone so bad where they're exactly. like, I don't want to play anymore. Exa yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But there's enough of that where it's like, I can't Sorry, take stuff I'm, from you. I'm going to take a bunch of stuff from you. And yeah. you're like, ah! You know, yeah. Mr. Pirate Raider over or here. I can block a little spot that you yeah, can duck Yeah, exactly. There. So it's kind of, it's, 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 it's just enough that you don't, there's no yeah. true tension. But that it's fun. Yeah, agreed. And, and I did play the game uh, with two players. Not as fun. It's a game that three or, or four players, I think, is really the sweet yeah. spot. Uh, you can play with two players and still uh, okay, but there's really, it's a binary thing. It's like either I have it or you have it. Yeah. And when mm -hmm. there's more people in the mix, it's much more fun. Yeah, so it's like you sense. get to the pirate thing, you're like, I guess I'm stealing all of your stuff. Yeah. Because there's nobody else to steal from. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, everybody, remember to stick around for this day in rad history. But first, sponsors, Daniel Trachtenberg. Oh, time to pop those shirts. Nice shirt. Pop them. Pop oh, the yeah. shirt. This. This. Pop. This. 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 Mog. <laughs> So Mog, 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 <laughs> Mog is an award-winning uh, all-you-can-eat music service that's, that lets you stream unlimited music on the web and on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Android, and Roku device. I actually use this all the time on my so iPhone, in my car, while I am driving. If I'm mm. out and I hear something or I'm reminded of, oh, I wish I had that, download it on Mog, stream it instantly, and I'm listening to it in my car hey, as yeah. I'm going. And Thank there's you. unlimited downloads on your phone, too. Unlimited downloads, unlimited access to over 10 million songs. Epic. Um, so here's the deal with Mog. Free from ads, oh. uh, no per track fees, nice. syncing and file storage, no nice. subpar audio, nice. and other restrictions you experience from services like iTunes or yeah. Pandora. <laughs> uh, Mog gives you customizable radio stations, mm -hmm. CD quality audio, easy playlist creation, and other awesome features. We actually made a playlist yes. they can access. We collaborated, Mog, put our minds together. Mog, Mog, Mog won the best mobile music app at the 2010 Billboard App Awards. That's awesome. Yeah. That's not just. I didn't even know they had app. Billboard App Awards. Yeah. <laughs> for, for music creation, that Billboard is like sort of pinnacle of music stuff and yeah. has been called a number one by USA Today, Time, TechCrunch, CNN, wow. LA Times, and more. So to listen to our playlist, we made this like summertime playlist. And there's some really cool songs on it. I hope people yeah. check it out. Yeah. I think there's some really fun songs on it. Head on over to mog.com slash TRS, where you can also sign up for a 14-day free trial. Amazing. Gotta try it. All right, people, we will see you tomorrow. Check us out tomorrow when Jeff runs the Ragnar Relay. Today is May 10th, and on this day in Rad History in 1996, the movie Twister is released. I was so excited for this movie. Yeah. The trailer oh, yeah. that just has like the guy in the basement shed holding that door and it gets sucked away. I was like, it's going to be Jurassic Park with tornadoes. Yep. Holy crap. I enjoyed the movie actually. Yeah, Revisiting it, eh, but it's I enjoyed it when dumb. it yeah. And it, right. it's one it of those first up. big uh, CG effects. Stuff, bad stuff happening after Jurassic Disaster Park. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I right. guess Jurassic Park would be the one that started it all. But right. um, Jan de Bont directed that. That sure did. Was King of the Hill at that time. Yeah. Well, and it, where is he now? Right. He, yeah, that was sort of the beginning of the end for him. Mm. Didn't didn't get much better after that. That movie also does not hold up. If you watch it, it's kind yeah. of not. There's silly things. things. Yeah. There are silly things. It was weird seeing Carrie Carrie Elwes. I feel like. It was, it was, Princess Pride, Robin Hood, Man, and then Robin Hood Mantis was like, oh, this guy can is like still around, does funny things. And then like he was like just a bad guy in that movie and isn't a in it very long. I don't think spoiler. He would use the word just. Yeah.